friends, Rebecca here, the Dragon Librarian from Farmington Community Library, and Zephyr and I are here today to talk to you about a book that I think might be one of the most unique books that I have read so far this year. You know, I read a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, and this one, the way it was told was just so really different and unique and refreshing, and it's just really stuck in my mind because I don't think that I've read anything like it before, and it was just so cool. Um, I wasn't sure what to expect going into it because, like I said, I had never read a book quite like this before that took a story and approached it in this manner, um, but I'm really, really glad I did, even because um, it might not have been something, you know, from the onset that it would be something I would normally read and enjoy, but I absolutely loved it, so I'm really glad I gave it a chance. What is this book? What book am I talking about? What am I going on and on about? Well, it is called The Grimoire of Grave Fates. Now it's edited by, or it's created by Hannah Alcaf and Margaret Owen, but really the most unique thing about this is the way in which the story is, is told. And that is, it is a murder mystery, okay? Which, all right, murder mystery, they're a dime a dozen, right? But it's told by 18 different authors from 18 different points of view. How awesome and cool is that? I just was so blown away by this. It's basically a lot of different short stories, but they're all working towards a common goal to come together in this grand picture, this grand design. So I've definitely read short stories before. They're not my favorite way of reading. They're not my favorite format. You know, I love me a good, really long book, a long fiction story. Short stories, a lot of times just don't do it for me. But this, because of the way that they're used to t work towards a greater, bigger, overarching story was just totally, I was on board with it. It was really, really cool. Like I said, I wasn't sure when I started reading it how I was going to feel about it, but I absolutely loved it. It was fantastic. So what is the actual story that is being told here? It's a murder mystery, right? So it takes place at this um, school called the Galileo, um, you know, School for the Extraordinary. So I just want to show a picture because in the very beginning of this, there is a gorgeous picture of the grounds of the school, which, you know, you might think, just look at that and be like, wow, that's really pretty, but it serves no purpose, but it does. It definitely does in the, per it, while you're reading the book, I referred back to it quite a few times. So basically the very beginning of the story, this professor that is really unpopular, Professor Septimus Dropwort. He's this stodgy old man teacher who is, you know, looks down on his students, especially those that are a little bit different from what he considers to be the status quo, right? So he looks down on them. He's not a good teacher at all. He has really harsh punishments. He has a lot of really bad assignments that he, that he um, you know, gives to the students. Well, in the very beginning of the story, he winds up dead. Yes, he is dead right from the beginning of the story. So basically then the story is told through the lens of 18 different students and you get the, how the relationship with the student was with him. It could be, you know, from the person who finds his body to a person that was just recently in his class and they all have their own reasons for wanting to solve this mystery of who was murdered because they're all afraid basically that the, um, the scrutiny of the, uh, of the, police or whatever is going to come down on them if they don't figure it out. And they don't really trust that the, um, you know, that the academic people above them or the police are going to be able to solve this murder accurately. So they each take it under their own jurisdiction, basically, to try to figure out who killed this professor, because let's, let's just say it, he had a lot of people that didn't like him, right? So the endless, the, the, the suspect list is basically endless. So basically, all these students are trying to retrace his steps they go into his office like sneaking around trying to find evidence they're following their own different paths you know which is another thing that's really cool because each of them has a different type of magical um agency right so they use they each use their magical powers to or their talents rather their magical talents to try and solve this mystery and as they're all doing this they're not all contained in a bubble right so as you're reading, you might have one character that comes across another in their chapter. And then that next chapter or a couple chapters down, it's that character talking. So everything is connected. Everything you read in each little story just works as to solve this picture as a whole. And it's just so cool. Like I said, I've read short
short stories before, I've read murder mysteries before, and I've t read tons of books that have different points of, written from different points of view. But I don't know that I've ever read a book that contained all of those things together. And it just works. Like, you don't think it would, and you're like, oh my god, 18 different points of view? I am not going to be able to keep them all straight. Yes, you will. I promise you will be able to because the way that they are all threaded together works really well for the narrative. It's seamless. It's just so cool. Like you have to experience this book, if only because it's just so unique and really awesome the way that this story is being told, right? Like I said, I've never, I don't know that I've ever read anything like this. Um, I thought the ending was really satisfying. I thought that the way that all these you know, narratives are pushed together. I really liked how the magic was used um, in this story and how it was, you know, worked for each student. It was just a really cool world. I did not want to leave it. And I really wanted to go to the school by the time I was done. I mean, you know, if as long as there were no more murders. <laughs> but it was a really fun place that I enjoyed spending some time with and I wish I could go back. Other than the fact that there's a lot of really cool, well-known authors that have contributed to this. So some of them that you might recognize are Kat Cho, uh, Victoria Lee, Darcy Little Badger, Kwame Mbalia. There's just a, a roster of really fantastic authors that lent their voices to these stories. That's worth reading it just for that. Highly recommend this. Definitely a unique story. Really, really fun. It was just such an exciting adventure. I loved it. The Grimoire of Grave Fates. Well, that's what I've got for you guys today. I hope that this book sounds really cool and interesting and unique. Um, and if so, if you'd like to read it, you can uh, get it at Farmington Community Library. And thank you so much for watching, everyone. And have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day. <laughs>